Hi everyone, and welcome back to the Hockey Journey Podcast. Episode number 112, Having Some Hockey Hardships? Presented to you by OnlineHockeyTraining.com. I'm your host, Coach Lance Petlin. If you're new here, please make sure you subscribe so you won't miss out on any future episodes. Before we head on over to the Mind Gym for a mental workout and begin this conversation, if you want to learn more about me, my hockey experiences, what I know, and most importantly, how I've been helping hockey players get really good with a stick and puck, just head on over to OnlineHockeyTraining.com and gain instant access to my 10-part video series where I'll show you everything. Consider it my gift to you. Lastly, if you live in Minnesota or are visiting the state of hockey sometime soon and you want to schedule an in-person off-ice stick skills lesson, I'd love to have the opportunity to show you my little world. Go to SweetHockeyCoach.com, that's SweetHockeyCoach.com, and watch the video on the homepage for instructions. Thanks, and I look forward to working with you sometime soon. In today's episode, we're not only going to explore the hardships that come with the game of hockey, but also the indomitable spirit of those who rise above them. We'll take inspiration from the timeless wisdom found within the pages of three remarkable books that helped guide me through some tough times over the years. My hope is that some of the big ideas that I'm going to share with you here today can maybe help you a little if you're going through a rough patch early into this winter hockey season. Remember that adversity and hockey hardships are merely checkpoints on the path to success. It's where character is built, where legends are born, and where the heart of the game and its players shine brightest. With that being said, let's begin. Book number one, The Champion's Comeback. How Great Athletes Recover, Reflect, and Reignite. By Jim Affermo. Quote number one, Grasping the baton from the hand of the champion's mind, how great athletes think, train, and thrive, this book looks at how all great champions continue to persevere despite losses, injuries, and other personal and professional setbacks. Success in sports rarely follows a straight line or predictable path. The champion's comeback zeroes in on how champions learn to repeat their successes and pick themselves up after setbacks by consistently practicing positive habits and thought patterns. This book is for people of all ages and all levels of competition. If you have the heart and desire to get back in your game and compete like a champion, this book is for you. End quote. Quote number two. Champions learn to see challenges rather than threats. How will you achieve your goal and how can you adapt and respond to various challenges? Going through setbacks in sports and other areas of life is perfectly normal, as nobody can avoid such things. How you choose to deal with setbacks, such as threats or challenges, is what makes the difference. One can choose to go back towards safety or forward toward growth. Wrote psychologist Abraham Maslow, Growth must be chosen again and again. Fear must be overcome again and again. We all want to make thinking, feeling, and acting like a champion part of our everyday life because, let's face it, demands and difficulties are part of all aspects of life. Making the move from contender to champion means stepping out of your comfort zone, calling on your inner strength and supporters, and reframing tough situations as growth opportunities and chances for comebacks. End quote. Quote number three, the seven L's of the champion's comeback code. Here are the seven L's that champions use to crack the champion's comeback code. Number one, let go. Release the mental brick. Number two, look for support. Build a winning team. Number three, love the game. Compete with purpose and passion. Number four, learn. Embrace a growth mindset. Number five, labor. Keep pounding the rock. Number six, learn optimism. 
Believe in your comeback story. And number seven, lean on your mental game. Win the game from within yourself. End quote. Quote number four, are you outperforming your contract? An uncompromising approach in training and continuous hustle in competition is vital to achieving sports-related goals. J.J. Watt is an NFL All-Pro defensive end for the Houston Texans. His willingness to embrace the extra effort required for excellence is one of the main reasons for his success. Here's what Watt says about working hard and representing yourself well. I think no matter what job you do, I don't care what job it is, you want to outperform your contract. I feel like that's how everybody should attack their job at least. You should want people to think you're underpaid because of how hard you work, because of how well you do your job, because of how you go about your business. Take a moment for honest self-reflection. Are you outperforming your contract? Are you attacking your job on a daily basis? What about in your sport? Are you one of the hardest workers on your team? Put in 100% maximum effort toward your goals and bring a passion to the work? Be willing to put in the blue collar labor rather than just wishing you had more talent so that everything would come easily? It never will. The great ones make it look easy, but only after they put in the time and work. End quote. Bonus quote number five. Practice till you can't get it wrong. Remember, you don't do something until you get it right. You do it until you can't get it wrong. Build solid mental and muscle memory. Don't just practice a move or technique and stop when you do it right once after several attempts. Instead, when you do something right, practice until you can do it right consistently. Continued practice will make proper techniques and form feel like second nature. That should be your goal for each and every technique. Effort in becomes effortless out. End quote. Bonus quote number six, want to live longer? Smile. The positive psychology field has taught us about the benefits of optimism and happiness. One study correlated the lifespans of Major League Baseball players with their smiles. In 2010, researchers Ernest Abel and Michael Kruger analyzed 230 baseball cards from 1952 a time when cards featured athletes looking straight at the camera. The results will make you want to smile. Players not smiling had an average lifespan of 72.9 years. Players partially smiling had an average lifespan of 75 years. Players with a full smile had an average lifespan of 79.9 years. End quote. Bonus quote number seven. The three P's of peak mental performance. Our minds naturally drift or zone out. We're only human. Mental training allows us to notice this before it's too late and provides us with the tools to bring our focus back to the task at hand. With enough training and discipline, you will develop the determination to focus on the moment's challenges. Keep to the three P's. Focus on the present. What is happening this play, this moment? Focus on the positive. What are you doing well, your strengths? Focus on the process. What you need to do in order to be successful. End quote. And bonus quote number eight. Your comeback story. We play sports for the stories. Some good, some bad. There is no greater motivation than wanting to tell a good story. You are now ready to take the first step on your next journey. Think about the comeback story you want to tell for the rest of your life. Then, write it. End quote. Book number two, The Art of Mental Training, A Guide to Performance Excellence, by D.C. Gonzalez. Quote number one, Welcome to the Art of Mental Training. Sports mental training has been called the science of success, but make no mistake, if you imagine that the lessons here apply only to sports and athletes, you'd be wrong. For it's the everyday warrior, from all walks of life and all types of scenarios, 
that stands to benefit immensely from the knowledge and techniques that lie ahead. No matter what you do or whatever challenges you face, the art of mental training can help take you to another level of performance, achievement, and personal success. End quote. Quote number two, why mental training? I need you to recall an occasion when you performed at your best, and then remember a time when you were at your worst. Now, when you look at those two performances, I want you to be honest with yourself and ask, what made the most difference between the two? Could it have been your mental state that made the most difference? And that's the important point. No matter what your game is or what the challenge is, the difference between great performances and average performances is mostly mental. Once you reach a certain level of skill, it's your mental skills that start making all the difference. The better they are, the better you will become, and the better your results will be. End quote. Quote number three. A champion teaches himself the skill of turning things around inside his head, I explained. He learns how to look at a negative setback both as temporary and even as an opportunity for positive change. He knows that things he can learn from his loss will make him even better, even stronger in the long run. The mental warrior learns from his setbacks and doesn't allow them to distract him from reaching his true potential. So keep your self-talk positive. Keep your outlook positive. By doing so, you give yourself the best chance to perform well. Take on your inner feelings with courage and determination. Never allow a bad attitude to hold you back from achieving the level of personal success that you are capable of. End quote. Quote number four. Stop the negative. Fire off the positive. He taught me to interrupt any negative self-talk the instant I noticed it and replace it by firing off positive self-talk. Things like, I'm fast, I'm focused, I'm good. He always said not to let negative thoughts get in your way. You have to cancel the negativity and feed your self-belief instead. This will improve your concentration and lower your level of tension, which will help you perform better. Shutting down negative self-talk begins by interrupting it and then instantly replacing it. End quote. Bonus quote number five. The critical three. Breathing, relaxation, and imagery are mentioned throughout the lessons so often because they're such fundamentally important tools for the warrior champion. I call them the critical three. I remember how Leo Tai spoke of all three. They're crucial in order to help create the ideal mental climate from which peak performance springs forth. End quote. Bonus quote number six, Imagineering. Imagineering, the technique of showing our minds how we want things to go, and a term first made famous by legendary dreamer Walt Disney. We should all take his advice and allow ourselves to practice sensory-rich imagineering. Champions use imagineering prior to their events. It's also often used by people in order to help them achieve successful completion of a project or an important goal over time. This simple practice has been proven to be so essential and so effective that the athlete who fails to practice this technique apparently never plays to his true potential. Interestingly, the same results have been observed with actors and musicians as well. For performance of any kind, mental preparation is as important as physical training. So, if you leave Imagineering out of your preparation, you will be hurting yourself and helping your opponent. End quote. Bonus quote number seven. Lacking motivation? Set some goals. Warrior champions set out to turn their dreams into reality by taking action through goal setting. Mental athletes are goal-oriented. They have vision. When an athlete complains of lacking motivation, you can be sure that it's almost always caused by goals that fail to inspire him to action. Goals serve to keep you on target. They increase the desire to achieve. While setting your own private goals, 
be sure that they are both challenging and realistic. Slightly out of reach goals are best, inspiring hard work yet still attainable with dedicated effort. Goals need to be set neither too high nor too easy or low, which would defeat their very purpose. Goals should be written down and reviewed frequently. Goals should come in the form of daily goals, monthly goals, and annual goals, and remember that what you are striving for is progress rather than perfection. Believe me, as you begin to focus on meaningful, specific goals, the power of your hidden reserves will be unleashed and good things will begin to happen. End quote. And bonus quote number eight. The most important lesson, self-belief. As the sun hazed into the sea, I remembered so many other sunset lessons over the years. Perhaps Leo Tai was remembering them too, for he suddenly said, From amongst all the lessons, what one most important thing do you think I would always want you to remember? If there was just one, what do you think it might be? So many things I thought. I thought hard. Learning to never give in. Not allowing negativity. Self-discipline. Staying in the present. Control of anger, control of fear, imagineering, to believe in my dreams. And then I remembered, self-belief is what gets everything going. Self-belief, I told him. Our eyes met, and he glowed back at me. End quote. And book number three, 10-Minute Toughness, The Mental Training Program for Winning Before the Game Begins, by Jason Selk. Quote number one, while other sports psychology books do a good job of telling you what to think, 10-Minute Toughness will teach you exactly how to develop the mental toughness needed to formulate and maintain these productive thoughts. It provides individuals with the details needed to accomplish the development of mental toughness. If you complete the mental strength program provided here, you cannot help but become mentally tougher. I have presented the 10-Minute Toughness Mental Training Plan not only to athletes and coaches, but also to business executives, corporate teams, performance artists, and many other types of clients. This book will give you the tools to customize the program of your own needs. Whether you're an aspiring athlete, a mental manager looking to connect better with your team and get ahead, or someone striving for personal fitness, Mental toughness is the common source for the drive necessary to bring your goals within reach. I use athletes and competitive sports as my primary examples in the pages that follow, but the principles of mental strength training are the same for competitors on and off the field. End quote. Quote number two, 10 minute toughness mental workout. Number one, the centering breath. A 15-second deep breath designed to control arousal states. Number two, the performance statement. A specifically tailored self-statement useful for increasing training and competitive focus. Number three, the personal highlight reel. An advanced form of visualization allowing athletes to increase skill refinement and consistency. Number four, the identity statement, a concrete self-statement proven to enhance self-image and performance confidence. Number five, the centering breath. As in step one, a biologically established relaxation technique used to increase the potential to perform well under pressure. End quote. Quote number three, six plus two plus seven equals a magic formula. I've tried to simplify diaphragm breathing by qualifying a good centering breath as one that lasts 15 seconds. The formula is six, two, seven. Breathe in for six seconds, hold for two, and breathe out for seven seconds. Individuals under the age of 12 should try to have a centering breath that lasts 11 seconds. Four, two, five. 
I have found that if players take a deep breath that lasts 15 seconds, they will in fact get air into the diaphragm and the heart rate will slow. My personal findings indicate that attaching time to the centering breath is more effective than monitoring oneself getting air into the diaphragm. It is much easier to count to 15 than it is to determine whether the air has entered the diaphragm. End quote. Quote number four, thought replacement. The key to using thought replacement in sports is to identify what thought is most helpful for performance. If you determine what you want to accomplish in any given situation, then lock your mind on what it takes to achieve that goal. You will have a much better chance of reaping the rewards. This is true in any setting, business, sport, or even social. As often as possible, choose to think about the path to success rather than the obstacles in your way. You have to decide what you want and then put your energy into acquiring it. Don't wait for good luck to find you. Go out and create your luck. The only reliable method for overcoming self-doubt and negative thinking is to supply something else for your mind to process. End quote. Bonus quote number five, mental tough, goal goodness. Once you have blocked out your goals and your personal vision, you owe it to yourself to give your best effort to meet those challenges. Giving your best effort means doing anything that will help you become the slightest bit better, and the research clearly confirms the benefit inherent in using goals. The 10-Minute Toughness Goal Setting Program relies on seven principles for optimal effectiveness. Here's a recap. Number one, process over product. Each day, focus on your process goals or what it takes to achieve your product goals. Number two, no excuses. Take full accountability for growth by not offering excuses for underachieving. Number three, go public. Write down your goals and tell others what they are to increase your consciousness of your goals and your accountability for reaching them. Number four, keep goals alive. On a daily basis, fill out your success log to enhance motivation and results in practices and competitions. Number five, vision integrity. Choose goals aligned with who you want to be and how you want to live. Number six, personal reward preference. Attach rewards to your goals to burnish motivation and commitment. Number seven, MP100 plus 20. Let goals embellish and control your work ethic by aspiring to follow 100% of training plans and committing a further 20% of your energy to outworking the competition. End quote. Bonus quote number six, being relentlessly solution focused. I recently had a client ask me, what does it really mean to be solution focused? Being solution focused means keeping your thoughts centered on what you want from life and what it takes to achieve what you want as opposed to allowing thoughts of self-doubt and concern to occupy the mind. The difference between a solution focus and a relentless solution focus is how often you commit to replacing negative thinking with solutions. Personal research tells me that most people achieve solution-focused thought about 40% of the time, while individuals with a relentless solution focus replace 100% of undesirable thinking with thoughts emphasizing solutions. End quote. Bonus quote number seven, the plus one game, improvement over perfection. Put the plus one concept into action to prevent feelings that plague your mind with unnecessary stress. The best way to climb a mountain is one step at a time. Gradual improvement over time brings about vibrant and sustainable growth. I have observed that when individuals emphasize improvement over perfection, 
their progress accelerates. We frequently get confronted by how much work it will take for our problems to be completely resolved. We become paralyzed, unable to take action toward improvement. You do not need to arrive at perfection. You need to slowly but surely make things better. End quote. Bonus quote number eight. Ready, fire, aim. Emphasizing the plus one concept helps people get started. An old riddle asks, what's the best way to eat an elephant? Answer, one bite at a time. Lanny Basham, an Olympic gold medal shooter, calls this handy precept the ready, fire, aim principle. Lanny claims that in sports and in life, people spend too much time aiming at the bullseye and not enough time shooting at it. Rather than placing so much emphasis on getting ready and aiming, go ahead and take a shot. Taking the shot gets you started and also lets you gauge how far off the mark you are. Make adjustments, but keep shooting until you get closer and closer, and eventually you will hit the bullseye. End quote. And bonus quote number nine. Two rules. Anytime you are in the presence of adversity, ask yourself, what is the one thing I can do that could make this better? Force yourself to give a substantive answer. I don't know is not an answer that will help. You do not need perfection. All you need is improvement. Keep asking yourself the question until your problem is no longer an issue. Follow two simple rules to ensure success. Rule number one, never ever give up. Rule number two, follow rule number one. You and only you decide how successful you will be in sport and in life. If you will commit yourself to stay focused on what you want and being relentless about going and getting it, you will be in control. It starts with your belief in yourself, the belief that you can accomplish anything. End quote. How crazy is that? The last sentence from the last quote gives the basic solution to all of us when having some hockey hardships and deserves a quick reread. It's short and sweet and goes like this. It starts with your belief in yourself, the belief that you can accomplish anything. End quote. Even when your back is against the wall, you get knocked down and feel there's nothing that you can do that will change your circumstance. If you still believe in yourself, you come out swinging, you get up, and you start putting one foot in front of the other, making progress regardless of how small or unnoticeable it may seem, and keep doing what you always do each and every day. And that's to be that authentic, genuine, passionate you. We can never go wrong with that. Well, that concludes another episode of the Hockey Journey Podcast. I can't thank you enough for stopping by and listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I also hope that there was a paragraph or a sentence that really connected with you, maybe disrupted a spell of negativity you were experiencing, and got you thinking in a more positive and proactive way. If you did, and you think that there's someone in your circle of family and friends that might like this episode as well, please share it with just one person. It will really help me in growing this hockey community. Again, I appreciate you being here. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, or submit a review. I hope to see you back here soon. And do me a favor, make someone close to you smile today. All the best, my friends.